I like the lights on. <laughs> like for the lights to be on right so I can see. <laughs> Let's get us a hymn book and turn to number 335. Number 335. Let us stand, we'll sing together. Other shall be shepherd of men. This is the prophet of love. There shall be seasons of refreshing. Sick from the Savior above. Shout of blessing. Shout of blessing we need. A mercy not found in the fall. But for the shower we there shall be showers of blessing, precious reviving again. Over the hills and the valleys, stand up abundance for rain. Showers of blessing, showers of blessing we need. seated choir singing we're not home yet children
Amen. Thank you, choir. Let's all stand together. Turn around and greet someone tonight. Team choir, come up as you can. Amen. Great to see you in the Lord's house tonight, and good to be here looking forward to what God has in store for us, and you pray for the team choir tonight as they sing for us.
Well, that's the truth, isn't it? Beyond measure. Beyond measure we are. Thank the Lord. Amen. Great job, young people. Wonderful. Wasn't that a blessing? Say amen. 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 It's a good crowd of young people up there, too. And good quality young people. Amen. And it's important to have both. Amen. And if I could have one or the other, I'll take spiritual young people. Amen. Amen. And I, we got both. We got spiritual ones and we got a bunch of them. Amen. And thankful to God for that. And uh, before we take the offering tonight, I want to read this to you from Brother David Smith. Thank you so much for the gift. May God bless each and every one of you. We love you. David, Karen, and Justin. And uh, one of the most spiritual men I know is David Smith. Um, he's a great Christian and he's facing things uh, now that uh, tough tough and we need to pray for him we need to pray for his family we need to pray for him and I trust you'll do so uh, don't forget about visitation 10 a.m. Saturday Freedom Kids practice Sunday at 530 uh, June 7th this Sunday is promotion Sunday and for those moving up and uh, please do so this Sunday, Teen Mission Trip, June 19th through the 29th. And tonight's offering will go in its entirety to that, unless it's designated tithes or offerings. So uh, if it's in an envelope, uh, missions is fine. Teen Mission Trip will be fine. You don't have to put anything on the memo, just uh, Freedom Baptist Church, and we'll know that it goes to uh, the missions trip. And I think we're right at eight over $8,000 now. In, uh, in what folks have took up on Wednesday nights. That's not counting the individual folks who uh, have raised money, but that's just from us on Wednesday night. And that's a great blessing. And a thank you so much, church, for doing that. What a great blessing it is. And I trust you'll give tonight and the offering. Brother Andrew, you lead us in prayer. Father, we just thank you so much for the time to all you give us. Lord, just thank you for allowing us to gather here today. Worship you, Lord. Just ask now that you bless the gift and the giver and this offering. Bless those that need it, Lord. Bless those that are less fortunate, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you. Wonderful. I had to look and see who that was over there with Miss Christie, and it's Hope. And that was amazing. Thank you, Lord, for your blessings on me. I'm glad he is a good God. Amen. I'm glad I don't serve Allah. I tell you, I, I'm glad to know I ain't got to get my suit on and go jump in the airplane and kill myself to be blessed of God. Amen. Amen. I mean, what kind of God is that, you know? And uh, boy, we serve a good one, I tell you. Praise the Lord uh, for it. And the Shields, good to have y'all back. We've been sick and good, good to see y'all back. Other folks who've been out, thank you. Good to have the, uh, some folks visiting with us to my right here. Thank you for being here. And Brother Easler's back and his wife. Thank you all for being here. The father's family, some other folks, thank you. And thank you for being with us tonight. Brother Bobby's got your buddy with you tonight. Amen, faithful. And I appreciate him being with us tonight. And all the way on the other side of the country over there in Madison, right, huh? And uh, but good to be in church tonight. And have your Bibles ready. Brother Fredericks is ready to preach. And I'll give you an update on 
uh, Brother Zane and some other things at the end of our time together. And so have your Bibles ready. Let's pray together. And we'll have a special one. Brother Frederick, you come on and preach to us. Father, we thank you for your goodness, your mercy. Lord, thank you for allowing us to be here tonight. And God, you have refreshed my memory as to how a brief life can be. And God, I pray that you'll help us all to be cognizant aware of the fact that we have just a short time here. And whatever we're going to do for you, we need to do it now. And I pray you'll help us to have a holy urgency about everything we do. And Lord, we love you. Bless the song now. Bless Brother Fredericks as he stands to preach. Holy Spirit of God, I pray you'll wrap your arms around him, shield him, hide him behind the cross, and we'll thank you for what you do now. In Jesus' name, amen. Sets of cousins up here, the Ellisons and Bollingers, great job. Thank you, Freedom Baptist Church. And uh, my family and I are privileged to be a part of a tremendous, tremendous church, the Freedom Baptist Church. What you have done to help out these teenagers going to the Bahamas on this missions trip in, uh, well, just about 17 days from now is, is just fantastic. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. We have a tremendous church. We're blessed. We have a tremendous pastor at our church, and he's no respecter of persons, and 
What I was blessed to see as we were in the waiting room on Monday night with the Snyders waiting and waiting and waiting and to look over and see your pastor in that room on his knees praying and asking God to do something great while the doctors were searching and searching and searching and then they did find out what was wrong. We have a great pastor of our great church. But all is void if all it is is men and men and women. We serve a great God. I'm thankful that His mercies are renewed every day. I'm thankful that He loves unconditionally and He's faithful. He'll never change. And let's be faithful to that same God that's been faithful to us. If, as I stand here this, morning, this evening, John chapter 20, please, and keep your Bibles open. We're going to be turning back and forth through the Gospels a lot this evening. Uh, if I were to make this statement as a young preacher as I am, I, I, I pray you don't just shut me down. But I'm literally going to give you something that started from my devotions this morning and later it turned into a Bible study and I was cross-referencing and going back and forth and, and well, this is what we're preaching on. When Brother Bobby Robertson, who's been preaching over 60 years, says something like that, people go, all right, give it to us. When a Raymond Hancock, a preacher who's gone on before us, would say something, I want to give you what God showed me this morning, we're okay. But I don't know if us young preachers can get away with that. And so, uh, but tonight I know this is what the Lord would have me to try to give to you. That song, How Blessed, sure is a blessing. Uh, I told our choir, you know, when we practice, we're teenagers, and I'm fine with us being teenagers, but I felt it was kind of getting away. I said, yo, yo, hey, let's stop, Let, let's remind ourselves. Let's picture ourselves in this atrium. We're going to have an activity. I want to drive up to Durham and be in that, that little atrium preacher. And when Zane gets ready to do one of his laps as he's walking around with that team of nurses and his mechanical heart machine, and, and I hope it's when that verse is that you've been at an altar, prayed with tears, and another miracle walks through those doors, and I want it to be Zane to walk through right there when we sang, How Blessed. Amen. And all of a sudden we got out of teenager mode and playing around mode and we got to thinking about the words of the song and that's a tremendous thought that we are blessed. And so let's not take that for granted. John chapter number 20. If I were to ask you to describe someone with just one word, I think it'd be pretty difficult. I see Steve Willard back here and, and a huge Tar Heel fan and I know there's several here, but... How do you describe Dean Smith with just one word? Coach, mentor, I mean there's so many. If I were to say raise your hand, we would probably have seven or eight different words from those who want to describe Dean Smith. If I were to ask you Carolina fans to give me one word to describe Coach K, remember we're in church. It'd be the same. Brother Jeff, if I were to say the word, the king, it's Richard Petty, right? I mean, there is no other king. But if I were to ask teenagers or Drew Tucker, who's from Cle who lives from the Ohio area, and Drew, if I were to say the king, he would think it's some basketball player, Brother Jeff. LeBron James. So to find one word to describe someone I think would be difficult. But if I were to say one name tonight, I wouldn't be surprised if 90% of us all thought the same word on this one person. Think about one word to describe this name. Thomas. Not your son, Lawson's. I know you're thinking, oh, I can think of some wonderful things about him. But in the Bible, if I were to say the disciple Thomas, what's the one word that's in most of our minds? Doubter. Doubter. Oh, Brother Melvin, I have something for you. See me after the service, please. Someone gave me something, and I'm supposed to give it to you, or I think I should. It's stuck on the lint in my pocket. Let me pull it out here. All right, there it is. And uh, I want to give it to you afterwards, so see me afterwards, please. It's a tie clip someone gave me that's got the marine insignia on it. And I said, I know someone who would enjoy that. And so you come see me afterwards if you could, and I want to give that to you. And uh, so, so the one word we think of when we hear the name Thomas is doubter. 
Doubting, Doubting Thomas, the doubter. And I thought to myself, why does he get that name? And if we were to think through our Sunday school lessons, well, you know, uh, you know the story. He was like, well, I wouldn't believe if it was God. I'd need to see the, the, the nail prints in his hands. I want to put my hand in his side. And that's the story in John chapter 20. But I want us to do something, and this is where my devotions turned into a Bible study. I want to try to chronologically go through the times after Jesus rose from the dead and kind of look at scripture verses, and we'll have to bounce around through the Gospels, okay? Now, let me just by way of introduction remind us, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Four different accounts of the same things taking place in the life of Christ. Matthew, a Jew, a tax collector, who became a disciple of Christ, writes it with one certain viewpoint, okay? Mark, not as wealthy as Matthew, but more of a servant type, laborer type person. He would write it from another viewpoint, all inspired by the Holy Ghost, we understand that. Luke, a doctor, he would write it with certain things. If you study through the miracles and read through how some are repeated in the Gospels, they weren't weren't different miracles in all cases. They were the same miracle, but just given from different viewpoints. Whereas Matthew might just say, and the guy received strength and could walk. Whereas Luke would say, and he rose up and walked and leapt with joy. He would be a little more specific as a doctor might be in the specifics of, this guy didn't just get up and start walking. He got up and then started to leap. I mean, he was healed, all right, in case you were wondering. And then we have John's viewpoint. John, the one that leaned on Jesus, the one who loved God, the the. The, the teacher's pet, the, the, the close one, the one while well, we write it. And so all these different viewpoints. So as we get to these, some of them record some things. Some of them are recorded, in, uh, for instance, in, in the miracles. Not all miracles are listed in every single book. Only one of them is recorded in all four. That's the feeding of the 5,000 where all four give an account of that. But they'll, they'll, so, so with that in mind... Here's where we go to John, and we'll begin in chapter 20. Let's look first at verse 11. And the Bible says this, that, well, verse, uh, the, 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 let's go to verse 1, and then we'll jump to verse 11, chapter 20. Then the first day of the week cometh Mary Magdalene, when it was yet dark unto the sepulcher, and seeth the stone taketh away from the sepulcher. Then she runneth and cometh to Simon Peter and to the other disciple to whom Jesus loved and said unto them, They have taken away the Lord of the sepulcher and we knew not where they have laid him. And so there they go. So let's go here to verse 11. This is after the resurrection. Here comes Mary. But Mary stood without at the sepulcher weeping. And as she wept, she stooped down and looked into the sepulcher and seeth two angels in white sitting, the one at the head and the other at the feet where the body of Jesus had lain. And they say unto her, Woman, why weepest thou? She saith unto them, Because they have taken away my Lord, and I know not where they have laid them, laid him. And when she had thus said, she turned herself back and, and saw Jesus standing and knew not that it was Jesus. So she's at the sepulcher, she's weeping, she just has a conversation with some angels that are in the sepulcher. I mean, just normal, well, I just came to see Jesus, but he's gone. So she now turns around to walk away, and she sees Jesus, but she doesn't know it's him. So this is the first person to, bottom, the first theophany, right, to see Jesus Christ after the resurrection. The first one was Mary here, and Jesus said, there, woman, woman, why weepest thou? Whom seekest thou? She, supposing him to be the gardener. She thought he was a girl. She said to them, Sir, if thou had borne him hence, tell me where thou hast laid him, and I will take him away. I mean, if you'd pulled him out of here, please, tell, I'll take him, please. Verse 10, Jesus saith unto her, Mary. And when Jesus said her name, Mary, it's the same way your mama says your name. See, a lot of people can say, Clint, Brother Clint, hey, Clint. But I know there's only one voice that says Clinton. 
And Mary was talking to the gardener and not the point of, oh, if you get, and she hears Mary. The goosebumps, I'm sure, were on her arms as they are on mine. And look what she says. She turned herself and said unto him, Rabboni, master? I mean, like, is it really you? But the crazy thing is this. She's not known as a doubter. She thought he was a gardener. So that's the first person we see that gets a view of Jesus. So now turn to Matthew chapter 28. Matthew chapter 28. Mary then goes back and as we read, she tells Peter, she tells the disciples, come, you got to see this. You're not going to believe what I just saw. Matthew chapter 28. This would be the second account we see here. So not only did Jesus appear to Mary, but remember there was a group of ladies there. Verse 1 of chapter 28, Matthew. In the end of the Sabbath, as it began to dawn toward the first day of the week, came Mary Magdalene and the other Mary to see the sepulcher. And behold, there were a great earthquake, and the angel Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone, and from the door and he sat upon his countenance was white like lightning, his raiment white as snow. For fear of him the keepers did shake and become as dead men. Now jump down to verse number uh, 9. This is where the Bible says, And they went to tell his disciples, Behold. Now, here's what I think happened is as the ladies turned to tell the disciples, Mary got to see Jesus there, and the ladies, as soon as she was done seeing Mary, got to see Jesus too. The Bible says here, because as soon as she saw, Jesus saw Mary, he said, go tell the disciples, go get the 12, get the chosen, get the picked ones. Now in verse 9 it says, and as they went to tell his disciples, behold, Jesus met them, the other ladies, saying, all hail. And they came and held him by his feet and worshiped him. Then said Jesus, be not afraid. Go tell my brethren that they go into Galilee and there they shall see me. And so he appears to Mary. He appears to these women, but they're not ever talked about as doubters. Luke chapter number 24, please. Matthew, Mark, Luke. Now if anybody could have been called doubters, I would think these two jokers could. The story here is amazing if you think about it. In Luke 24, we'll see in verse 13 that these two boys are going to go for a walk. They're going to head down the Emmaus Road and head that way about a seven and a half mile journey. And they're just going to go on this walk. And the Bible says in Luke 24, verse 13, stay with me with this introduction, please. And behold... Two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, about three score furlongs, seven and a half miles. And they talked together of all these things which had happened. And so now, uh, Brother Jimmy, seven and a half miles, if you were to jog it, maybe an hour and a half, you know, nice leisurely pace. If you pick up the pace, you can jog in an hour, 15 minutes but they're walking here, so we're probably talking at least an hour, 45, two-minute walk, probably, Brother Chris. So as they're talking, they're just kind of, whoa, just picture two boys uh, hearing this prophet preach. He was going to raise the temple in three days, and now the tomb's empty. Where did he go? Who is he? What's going on? And so as they're reasoning, the Bible says in verse 15, and it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near. And went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. So, so these guys are going, now let's head to Emmaus. I guess the, the, the party's not going to happen like they said. Build the, tear the temple down, rebuild it, let's go. And as they're starting to complain to one another, Jesus gets in the pathway too and goes, Hey, how you guys doing? Can I walk with you? Yeah, sure. And Jesus says right here, What manner of communication are these that ye have one to another as ye walk? And are sad. He says, why are you guys so down in the dumps? Talk to me. And these guys look at this guy like he's some idiot. A stranger is what they said. He says, and one of them whose name was Cleophas answering and said to him, art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem and hast not known the things which are to come to pass? And he says, hey, where have you been the last 72 hours? Don't you know? I mean, 
You know, how many of you understand if anything happens in Stokes County or in the city of King, like everybody knows about it. It's a small little town. We all know about it. Jerusalem was very similar. He says, man, where have you been for the life? Don't you, what do you mean? What are we talking about? Jesus was kind of egging him on. And then Jesus says in verse 19, he says, what things? And they said unto him concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all people, and how the chief priests and our rulers delivered. Do you understand what's happening? For the next hour and so, they're going, all right, dude, you don't know. Where have you been? All right, let me tell you. Let me inform you on what's going on since you don't know anything. All right. First of all, there was this guy and then the chief priest. And I wonder what Jesus' face was like. You, you ever have someone tell you a story and you're like, yeah, I was there. <laughs> I remember when we first moved to Hot Springs, Arkansas, Brother Preacher White and I went soul winning with Brother Paul Henniger. And I was talking about, oh, Normandy, man, there's this video game and it's so lifelike and you charge up and then you get, I said, these kids are so into it, this and that. And he was just so quiet when I was telling this whole story, Brother Forrest. Then after my 10 minutes of talking about some video game, he goes, yeah, I remember. You remember? He gave me his number and this and that and how they charged Omaha Beach and I just kind of started to slide down to my seat a little bit. But that never happened yet here. These guys are talking for 40 minutes, almost an hour, and it says that Jesus would have kept going. Uh, verse uh, 27, um, he, they're, again, they're talking about all these things that this man said. Or right, let's go to verse eight. And they drew nigh into their village where they went. And he, speaking of Jesus, made as though as he would have gone further. But they constrained him and said, abide with us. So they're like, well, we're here at our village. I guess you've heard us complain. We're going to head in over. Here. And Jesus would have just kept going. But they said, no, 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 wait, wait don't, don't go. It's a, it's a long walk till the next day. Why don't you come eat with us? All right. So now they're eating. And here in verse 30, it came to pass as he sat at meat with them, he took bread and blessed it and break, and gave them. He didn't call their name like Mary, but I guarantee you when they broke the bread and he blessed it, that these disciples may have been thinking, he broke bread. And that was their moment where they realized. Verse 31, their eyes were opened, and they knew him. And they started to go, hey, Wait, you're the one who broke bread for it. Yeah. And all of a sudden, he vanished. <laughs> I, mean, can you, I mean, you just had Jesus with you for 45 minutes on this walk, and then now you realize, you're like, oh, good, I watch here. He's gone. <laughs> this was the next, but these guys are, no one says doubting Cleophas. Now, look, I, I guess it almost seems like I'm the, I'm the defending lawyer here for Thomas, trying to get him off the hook for being doubting Thomas, right? I'm saying there's a lot of candidates who could have been doubting Thomas. We can go back to Luke chapter 24 now. I believe you're there, but we're going to bump ahead to the verses here. But as we get ready to look forward, let me say this. He vanished at that point. And I think at some point he must have bumped into Peter. Peter must have been out praying because in 1 Corinthians, don't turn here, 15 verse 5, the Bible says, really it says in verse 3, For I delivered unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, that he was buried, and he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures, and he was seen of Cephas, then the twelve. After that he was seen above more than 500 brethren at once, of whom we gather remain. So we see this, he was seen of Peter and then the 12. And so as we get to verse 30, uh, as the story goes on in verse 32, where the guys, Jesus just disappears, the Bible says, and they said one to another, did not our heart burn within us? While he talked with us by the way and while he opened unto us the scriptures, I mean, the word of God was quoting the word of God to us when we were walking and we didn't even know it. Oh man, did we not miss out on this? 
And then the Bible says in verse 33, and they rose up the same hour and returned to Jerusalem. Now, if it took them an hour and a half to get to Emmaus, I guarantee you they probably made it in 45 minutes back to Jerusalem. They had something to say. They were hightailing it. I don't know if they bought a chariot or something, if Hertz was busy or they just got a chariot and rented it for the week and got back. But it says they rose the same hour and returned to Jerusalem and found the 11 gathered together with them that were with him, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and hath appeared to Simon. So these boys race back here, and someone stands up and says, The Lord hath appeared indeed. He appeared to Simon. He's telling everyone here that he appeared to Simon. I don't know if Simon went for a walk. I don't know if Simon went to pray. But the Lord appeared to Simon. And he was telling them. And these two guys show up right when they say that. And then these guys say, saying the Lord is risen. The day hath appeared to Simon. In verse 35. And they told what things were done in the way. And how he was known of them in breaking of bread. But Simon Peter's never called doubting. Now we're getting close to where Thomas is. Jesus met with Simon. Jesus met with those two guys on the road and he continues to meet with them here in, chapter, in, in verse 36. And as they spake, they're here going, Simon saw Jesus. And these two guys, we saw Jesus. We we're walking on the road. And while they're all speaking, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and said unto them, peace be unto you. You guys aren't going to believe this, man. Simon Peter got to say, oh, no, 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 we saw him. We were walking. We talked to us. He quoted it on him. Boom, there he is. Right? Twilight Zone type stuff. That's why Jesus had to say, whoa, whoa, peace. Relax. Be still. Verse 37. But they were, what's the next word, class? Terrified terrified and affrightened and suppose that they had seen a spirit and he said unto them now look what he said unto these people who were terrified unto these people who were troubled look what he says why do thoughts arise in your hearts behold my what's the word it says behold my hands and my feet that it is I myself Handle me and see me, for a spirit hath not flesh and bones, as ye see me have. He goes, guys, you're afraid? Guys, you're stuck. Look, look, come on. You want to put your fingers in these holes? You want to come touch? Look, flesh, this is, this is real. You can touch me. Aren't those the same things we accuse Thomas of, of doubting? But we don't call any of these guys doubters. So now let's go to the passage in John chapter 20. And this is where we'll spend most of our time to finish. Thank you for going back and forth to look at scripture. Now, if we were, again, different perspectives from different disciples, I believe verse, in John chapter 20, verses 19 through 23 is the same story we just read about, where Jesus appears to the 11 that are there, and says, here's my hands. I think that is the same exact story, but from John's perspective this time. But now I'm going to go to verse 24, which follows that story. That says of the 11 that were there, but Thomas, one of the 12, Didymus, was not with them when Jesus came. The other disciples said unto him, and can, can you just picture this? Picture 11 of the guys in our church that could be like, you could see it very vividly as they say this. The other disciples therefore said unto him, Hey, we have seen the Lord. But he said unto them, Thomas, Except I shall see his hands, the print of his nails, and put my finger into the print of his nails, and thrust my hand into his sides, I will not believe. Now, none of these guys said, We thought you might say that, but you're not going to believe, Thomas. That's what he said to us. He held his hand up and let us put our fingers in. I mean, he showed us society, he showed us the flesh, he showed us all that. None of them said it. They just went, doubter. D doubter. Loser. Pfft, 
fine if you don't want to. Wait a minute, you 11. Don't act so all cool. That's like when you guys go through like a, a haunted trail and you know where the scary person is. So you're bringing your friends behind. Oh, hey, oh, oh, that scared me. But, but I'm not scared this time. Right. Hey, hey, guys, come on this way. Right here, right here. Come on, come on. And you're waiting for them to scare. That's what these guys, I mean, hey, you were scared to death when you saw him. You thought he was a spirit. And unless he showed you his hands, so why are you so hard on Thomas? As we continue to read here, verse 26, and after eight days, again his disciples were within, and Thomas was with them. Then came Jesus, the doors being shut, and stood in the midst and said, Peace be unto you. Then saith he to Thomas. He went straight to him. He didn't have to go to Peter. He didn't have to go to Cleophas. He didn't have to go to the others. He went straight to Thomas. And he says, Hey, reach in hither thy finger and behold my hands. And reach in hither my hand and thrust it into my side and, and be not faithless. We call him a doubter. Jesus says you're just lacking faith. You've become faithless. You stopped using the faith that you used so many times and now you're trying to use logic. He says you've become faithless. Let's get faith back into this. And Thomas answered and said unto him, My Lord and my God. Now, now why is Thomas shown as a doubter. The only thing I can think of, though I'm trying to defend him, is sometimes you're guilty by association. Because though he may not have been the doubter, although he was just like the 11, I'll tell you one thing he was. He was a powder. I never get to do nothing. They always get the fun stuff. Peter, James, and John? Well, what about the rest of us? Aww. He was Thomas the Pouter. I mean, look at, uh, you have to turn there. J John chapter 11. Lazarus is dead. You don't need to turn there. But, but listen to what it says. In Jesus, Jesus says, come, let us go unto Bethany. Right? Because Lazarus is dead. You know what Thomas' response was? Let us also go that we may die with him. <laughs> Yeah, let's go, hey, let, yeah, let's go. He's already dead. What are you going to do? Thomas the Pouter. John chapter 14. Let not your hearts be troubled. Ye believe in God, believe also in me. And as we go all the way, I'll just read it all the way through verse, it's such a pretty verse. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go to prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am there ye may be also. And whither I go ye know, and the way you know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whither thou goest. And how can we know the way? I mean, Jesus just plainly said in such good terms, Brother Roy, hey, stick with the kid and you'll go places. That's how we would say it in California, all right? And Thomas is like, yeah, but we don't know where you're going. You don't need to know where I'm going. You just need to be where I am. I'll take care of where to go. But Thomas the powder, mm -hmm. So part of me thinks that Thomas the Doubter became the title because he was so much of a pouter. Be careful how you are perceived by those who portray vision. Be careful on how you respond to those who, you, you know, we always have, oh, it's, look at those clouds, aren't that beautiful? Yeah, it's probably full of rain. This one boy was so negative, this neighbor guy, and so this guy finally had a dog. And he had a dog that when he took him hunting, Brother Jeff, he'd shoot the ducks down, and his dog would run on the, on the water. 
and bring the ducks back. He goes, surely if I take this guy hunting with me, he sees this dog, surely he won't be a pessimistic, negative person anymore. So he takes, hey, you they go hunting. He pulls a shotgun out, he hits a few ducks. He says, go get him, boy. He runs out there, grabs him one, two, three, brings him right back one at a time, running on the water. The guy looks and goes, what do you think of that? He goes, huh, your dog can't swim, huh? I say that to let you know that those who pout aren't very far from doubt. Well, I'm not as bad as so-and-so, but you're real close. And you're real close to living that verse, trust in the Lord with all thine heart. That's what is admonished of all of Bible believers. We're to trust in the Lord with all our heart and Lean not unto thine own understanding. And if we can't trust him with all our heart, that must mean we're faithless. And if we're faithless, we're probably more on this side than we really think we are. Because we're kind of in the middle, we're powders. All right, it's potluck. Come on out. First come, first serve. Psh, chicken's all gone. Oh, going to a different church. I didn't get chicken at the potluck. All right, here we go. Oh, oh, look who's in our pew today, huh? Well, I guess we'll have to sit back here today. Oh, you know, I just sat there for the last 12 years, I guess. Doesn't mean anything, though. They're called visitors. It's good to have them here. They don't know you have reserved seats and at 36 seconds right before the service starts, you're supposed to take those seats. They don't know that. They just want to come enjoy a service. Isn't that why we're all here? I think he was the doubter because he was a powder. But one thing that I think it's overlooked is that when he does put his hands in the print, his fingers, and he puts his hand in that side, was his response of a shouter. Amen. When he said, my Lord and my God. Amen. It's more than just words, my Lord and my God. Thomas says, in my Lord you have the throne on my heart, my Lord. And when he says, my God, he says, you have your throne in the universe. These words aren't just put in there just to fill up space. When Peter was asked in Matthew 16, whom do men say that I am? Peter said, thou art the Christ. He says, rightful to the throne as prophet, as priest, as king. You are the Christ, the son of the living God. The son of the one who sits on the throne of the whole universe. Don't forget Thomas was a shouter. That one thing Thomas is accused of. I want to stick up for him, but it's hard to, Thomas, when you're always pouting. Oh, there's no more window seats on the bus. Guess I got to go sit by Brother Clint. There's no more donuts left. Be careful pouting. Because as great as it was what he shouted, he's more known for his doubting. And it's sad because what he shouted was so good. My Lord and my God. But he didn't just say it. Is Luke in here? Luke's with Mama. Man, don't sing it. Woo, bring it. One of Luke's favorite words we like to joke back and forth is, don't just tell me about it, show me. Okay, Thomas, what are you going to show me? You know, Peter gets a lot of credit for the day of Pentecost. 
But there were other disciples there preaching also. One of them, Thomas. When those five, yeah, when those people got saved, cloven tongues of fire, the breath of God, whoosh, yeah, Thomas was part of that. Why? Because he says, you're my Lord and you're my God. He says, good, I want to use you. <laughs> Thomas preached the gospel. The Lord commanded, he wanted the Gentile nations to hear it. He preached in what's known as Eastern India, Babylon, but Eastern India nowadays. He was martyred for the cause of Christ, for preaching because priests and stuff didn't like what he was saying. I wouldn't say appropriately because I wouldn't wish this on anybody. But the spear that stuck Jesus in the side that Thomas had to stick his hand to to prove that he really believed who it was was the same type of weapon that Thomas was killed with, a spear. Doubting Thomas? Yeah. But I like to think of him as shouting Thomas. Young people, church members, be careful about how one decision can change how everybody thinks about you. Isn't that right, Eve? Just one decision. Isn't that right, Esau? Just one decision. Oh, I'm going to die. I need to eat something. Yeah, here's a birthday. Yeah, whatever. Just give me some... Ch just, just one decision. You know, you think of the great things that the judge Samson did, and normally you always put them together. Samson and we all think that first. One bad decision. But then I do say this, that a failure does not have to be final. Isn't that right, David? Yeah, I made one bad decision but create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Purge me with hyssop that I may be made white, whiter than snow. Yeah, God does punish the poor decisions we make, but I also know this. If we want to have that hand of blessing on us, <laughs> preacher just spoke about it, the blessings of God and how blessed and as we read and finish in verse 29, uh, my pages got turned here. I want to finish chapter 20, verse 29. Jesus saith unto him, Thomas, because thou hast seen me, thou hast believed. Blessed are they that have not seen and yet have believed. As great as that is, Thomas, I'm, I'm sure I'm glad you believe me and thank you for making me God of your heart. Thank you for me, Lord of your heart and, and God of all things in your life. He says, but, but I'm right here in front of you. He says, Thomas, if people are going to be blessed is when they don't see me and they believe me. See, in 2015, there's going to be people in Rural Hall, North Carolina, who are just going to have to believe that God can heal a little boy in a hospital. They're just going to have to believe without seeing that they could touch the body of a David Smith. They're just going to have to believe that one day Danny Cole can get on his bus route and not take six minutes just to get that knee not to bend as he gets up and in that bus to run it every Sunday. That, that one of these days God can touch his knee and just make him run up and down the aisles with the rest of the kids. Those are the ones who will receive a blessing. So church, here's my question. How's your faith? Are we faithless as Thomas was accused of? Father, tonight I pray you would help us. Help us to live lives of faith. God, I'm so burdened that many of us have faith that you can take us to heaven, but we don't have faith that you can help us live here on earth. Give us the faith that we need. Increase our faith. Strengthen our faith multiply our faith. And God, for those who might be here, they are, they are worldwide members of the Pouting Club. Boy, anytime something goes on, they've got a negative statement about it. And then they wonder why people think they're so critical. Why do people always think I'm so... 
Because they are. God, open up our eyes to see that you have great things for us. Bless us, Lord. Fill us. Help us to believe without having to see. May we take you at your word. Our heads are bowed, our eyes are closed. Is there anybody here tonight? The word of God states that people are born, they live, and they die and go to one of two places. When they die, they go to a place called heaven or a place called hell. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, if you don't have a relationship with him where you've asked him to come into your heart and you're trusting him and what he did on the death, burial, and resurrection, he says, I am the way, the truth, the life. No man cometh the Father but by me. Believing without seeing. If you can put your simple faith in Christ, he says he'll take you to heaven. And then if there's those who are here tonight who have an obstacle in front of you, I know someone who can help you overcome it. Yeah, is, is, if I could see this happen and that happen and that. No, no, if, if you'll believe without seeing, you'll be blessed. Yeah, but didn't Gideon put a fleece out? That doesn't mean it was right. Yes, he did put a fleece out. But blessed are they that believe without seeing. How's your faith tonight, church? Heads bowed, eyes closed. Let's stand to our feet. Miss Carla, just go ahead and start to play. We'll Hello, open. Pastor White here. I want to thank you for tuning in to our live stream today. Uh, whether you watched it live or on YouTube uh, or maybe an archived sermon, thank you so much for taking the time to do so. And I wanted to conclude the message today by telling you a few things uh, about how God feels about you and us in general. First of all, I want you to know today, if you're listening, God loves you. The Bible says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believed in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. And that means you, friend. And so I want you to know today God loves you. The second thing I want you to know is that all of us are sinners. We've all missed the mark. The Bible says in Romans 3.23, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. We've all missed the mark, every one of us. The Bible also says in Romans chapter 5, verse 8, But God commended his love toward us, and that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And then in Romans 10, 13, the Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. I want to encourage you today, friend. There is hope for you. There's hope in the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you'd like to talk to someone about trusting Christ as your Savior, you can do so. You can reach us at the church here at area code 336-969-6937. Or you can reach us on our website at freedombaptistrh.com where we'll have more information about salvation. And we'd love for you to let us know of your decision for Jesus Christ today. If you need prayer, if you need encouragement, please don't hesitate to call or email or visit our website. And we trust that, that you'll find the help needed in the Lord Jesus Christ. May you have a wonderful day. And may God bless you. Thank you again for listening to our broadcast.